Ms. Flanagan, how many people do you figure you had as audience in the United States for these plays? And the recorded figure, Congressman, dies with something like 25 million people. In other words, you have reached approximately 25% of our population with your play. Something like that, yes. Now, you wrote for Theater Arts Monthly, November 1931, did you not? Yes, I did. I quote this from that same article. Start dramatic groups in unions, in fraternal organizations, in social clubs, in company unions, in YMCAs. Dot the land from coast to coast. Don't expect profit in money. These theaters exist to awaken the world. May workers. I interrupt just one minute? Please notice that that is a quotation. A quotation, yes. But these are your words I'm quoting. The workers' theaters intend to remake a social structure without the help of money. And this ambition alone invests their undertaking with a certain Marlowe-esque madness. You are quoting from this Marlowe. Is he a communist? I'm very sorry. I was quoting from Christopher Marlowe. Tell us who this Marlowe is so we can get the proper reference, because that is all we want to do. Put in the record that he was the greatest dramatist in the period of Shakespeare, immediately preceding Shakespeare. Of course, we had what some people call communists back in the days of the Greek theater. If you say so. And I believe Mr. Euripides was guilty of teaching class consciousness also, wasn't he? I believe it was alleged against all the Greek dramatists. So we cannot say when it began. Wasn't it alleged also of Ibsen and against practically every great playwright? I think so. Countess.